back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to talk about variable valve timing. Specifically, as an example, we're going to use Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi calls theirs MIVEC. stands for Mitsubishi Innovative Valve Electronic Control. Their system is a little bit different in that it does vary between Intake, cam only, advance, intake and exhaust in the case of the newer engines in the 4B11 and in the 4G69, a high-low cam and uh, variable cam advance similar to Honda's IV Tech. What we're going to talk about does kind of focus specifically on how you would tune the Mitsubishi side of it, but... In application, you can use this on a Coyote Mustang, you could use this on IV Tech, you could use this on Toyotas, you could use this on BMWs. Anything that has VVT, these principles will work. How you come up with the numbers, what it takes to make it all work, that is going to vary per platform. I will explain how I came up with some of my numbers as we progress through this. But let's start by looking at an Evo 9. Evo 9 has MyVec on the intake cam only. This is a stock map. Actually, that made it worse. This is a stock map. And what you see here is numbers in degrees. Think of it as ignition timing. Positive is gonna be in advance. Negative would be retarded. In this case, at idle, it's zeroed out. If you ever wonder how somebody does the ghost cams in the Mustang world, something I did back in 2006 in the Mitsubishis, you advance your cam at idle. Makes it nice and brappy until you rev it up and it smooths back out. You can see that as this one comes up into cruise, which is this section here, comes up to 19 degrees. It dips down for a second, starts to ramp up, peaks out at 24 degrees, around 5,000, and then tapers off as it goes up. What this is doing is creating cylinder pressure. The more advanced you have, the more cylinder pressure you're going to make to a point. In this case, Mitsubishi came up with this map for the U.S. market, for the U.S. market camshafts and turbo and octane. Why they vary, I don't know. The Evo 10s, they vary year to year, it seems like. But the Evo 9 in the U.S. market, this is the map you would have got. Now, you can use this in an, a couple of different ways. As you can see, it's more advanced right towards where they're going to make peak power. Normally, even though they're rated at 6,500, they'll make peak power a little bit less than that, around 6,000. But you can see that it's trying to make good mid-range torque by creating lots of cylinder pressure. Now, if you don't have octane, that can be a problem. Maybe that's why they, they did what they did. If we move over to the Japanese version that I have in a map, took me a while to find. You can see they kind of do it a little bit different. Cruise is more aggressive. They're running full advance, which in this case... There's 30 degrees of motion. The Evo 9 will run 28.8 forward and negative 1.2 retard at a minimum. So they're trying to do all of it all at once, get that turbo lid off, make all the bottom end they can, and then slowly bring it out as the RPM goes up. This one's been modified a little bit, but kind of gives you an idea. This is closer to what stock would look like. This one was for a car with cams. But as you can see, Numbers are starting to die down as RPM goes up. Again, this is from 2007. This is an old MyVec map. This is not how I currently tune. But the idea is, as RPM goes up, you want to retard cam timing to make more power, at least in the Mitsubishi. There are some examples that I can think of where that is not the case. K-Series Honda is one. 4B11s with certain cams. You keep this advanced to make cylinder pressure to make power. Something else that you can do in some models, where you can't do this in all of them, you can see what I'm doing here, is as soon as the turbo lights, you can drop all of that cam advance. You don't need the cylinder pressure. You're going to make the cylinder pressure with boost. 
You're going to do it the right way. Evo 9 is not very picky. Once that turbo is lit, you can get the cam advance out of it. Again, this isn't an exact example, but it kind of gives you an idea of the method that you can keep knocked down, use the boost to make the power because you have increased airflow, which is the best way to do it in my opinion. And again, taper out as you go out the top. Now I have dynoed 4B11s back and forth, blocked out versus not blocked out. I tend to still tune them this way. But if you take, let's say, a VR38 and do that, you will kill power. And when I say kill power, you'll take a 100 horse out very, very fast. They need that constantly. K-Series Honda seems to be very similar. Do you need a 50 degree VTC? No, not usually. The stock 40 works great, but if you take the advance out too fast and don't hold it in there, especially before it crosses VTEC, you will kill power. So again, application specific, turbocharger specific. If it's naturally aspirated in the case of a K-Series, you're going to do different stuff compared to what I might do here on a 4G63 or a VR38. That all being said, as you can see, creating cylinder pressure by advancing the cam is only an end to a means. If you can turn up the boost and run the octane, you're generally better to do that because you're taking in more cubic feet of air per minute versus trying to trap it and take in less amount and just maximize what you have. Now, maybe there's going to be times you do that. Maybe it's a restrictor car. Maybe your altitude's limited. You're going to try to hold that cylinder pressure as long as you can. By and large, though, you will find as you tune or have your car tuned, that's not the case. Is there a right way or a wrong way? Well, that's an open-ended question. That's like asking who's the best tuner. It's really difficult to say. The way I was able to develop all of this was by using engine simulation software to run every iteration between zero degrees advance and maximum advance, the 30 degrees I mentioned, between zero and 10,000 RPM to come up with a map that I felt would give me a, a strong candidate to implement into a car. Now, when I show you what a modern map looks like briefly, you're going to see it doesn't look like that at all. I've condensed the RPM side over here. Basically, it's still the same. I just plugged in numbers that I got from a computer. I cheated. But you know what? That's how you win. Anyway, that concludes this video. If this is content that you like, please consider subscribing. Please share it with your friends if you think they might like it. If you do subscribe, it's easy to hit the alarm bell. It'll notify you of any new content that gets added to the channel. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you're having a good race season so far. Take care, guys.